Hi everyone, uh, this is Kamal. Welcome to my channel on Stantip here. Perhaps you know a binary code consists of ones and zeros. Everything in a computer ultimately exists as ones and zeros. So through ones and zeros, how does a computer know what to type? Or say, how does it recognize pictures in your pen drive or songs in a CD. This video explains binary code in clear non-technical terms with animations. And uh, if you are teachers like me and if you are struggling to explain this concept of ones and zeros to your students, this video is definitely for you. So let's start. Before discussing binary code, you need to understand a little bit about a part of CPU. So you can see a computer and its different parts here. Now this part is a system unit box. If you open this system unit box, uh, that's what you see. As you can see, important parts of computer are here. Now, you can see a fan here. Below this fan, there is a small but the most important part of a computer called CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit. A CPU has a very similar role in a computer that brain has in a human body. Whatever you, whatever your eyes sees, ears hear, or your nose smells, they all have to reach your brain. A brain then interprets what you saw, heard, or smelled. Think about this. When you wake up in the morning, can you tell what did you hear in your sleep? No. So why was it? Was your ear closed while you were sleeping? No. In fact, your brain was not active. So, if anything doesn't reach brain, then you wouldn't know what it was. Very similar things happen in a computer. Whatever you type, whatever is in your pen drive, or whatever is in your CD, they all have to be CPU. A CPU then interprets what information it was. If anything doesn't reach CPU, then, well, your computer won't know what it was. So we just said everything has to be CPU, but how do all this information to receive you. Remember, electric current is the only thing that can travel in a cable or in fact any other parts of the computer. Clearly, when you type something say a letter A, the letter A itself cannot travel in a cable connecting a keyboard and a CPU. So, this does not happen. Similarly, let's say there is a picture of a house in a pen drive. Does the picture travel through a cable and reach to CPU? Like shown here? No. I mean, how can a picture travel in a cable? Assume there is a song in a CD. So again the question is, does the song travel through a cable? Like shown here. Clearly no. So, remember, data and information in their initial original state cannot travel through a cable 
the city. Before we can answer how data from different parts of computer is CPU, you need to know about a binary code. Every data and information in computer has a code. Let's say code of a letter is 1010. A code of a picture of a house is 1001. Code for a song is, say, 1100. Well, uh, here I have simplified things. For example, binary code of picture is obviously not 1001. It's definitely much more complex than this. But uh, let's simplify things here. Now the concept of code is not new and is used in many places in our everyday life. For example, a basic cash register used in uh, small shopping stores. So you can, here you can see code being used. How? For example, in cash register, name is not entered in a you know, name is not entered. So code is entered. Let's say you bought some apple. So do you type apples? No. Code of apple is uh, 108 in this example. So you actually type or enter 108. However, there is a little difference in a code used in computer and in cash register. Code used in computer only consists of ones and zeros, hence is a binary code. Well, code used in a cash register can have any digits out of 10 digits and hence a decimal code. So we said earlier, all data and information have to reach CPU, but they cannot travel in their original form in cable. Let's say you type letter A, but the letter A itself cannot travel in a cable. So well, this cannot happen. We also said each data in a computer has a binary code and you know binary code consists of ones and zeros. Let's say binary code of letter is 1010. But the problem is ones and zeros in a binary code also cannot travel in the cube. So well this does not happen. This means we need to send certain thing that would represent one and another different thing uh, that would represent zero. So what can we send? Remember we said earlier electric current is the only thing that can travel in a cable or in fact any other parts of the computer. So really the question is what kind of current to send that would represent 1 and what kind of current to send that would represent 0. So let's say this is a current source and let's see what kind of current comes out of this current source. Initially current is not coming, current has started to come, current has gone down to zero and current has again started to come. Now you could send current of certain value to represent one and not set and not send current for some time which is current of zero value 
to represent 0. With this system, this type of current would represent 1, 0, 1, 0, right? So if you send this type of current, that means you are in fact sending 1, 0, 1, 0. So this current is representing 1, 0, 1, 0. And similar thing happens in case of pictures or sound. So well, we said earlier, picture itself cannot travel in a cable. Picture has a coat, but well, coat also cannot travel in a cable. So what ultimately travels is current representing so, current actually travels and well now you can tell similar thing happens in case of song. The song itself cannot travel in a cable, song has a code but you know code also cannot travel. So what actually travels? The current that represents code. Current representing code. As we said, uh, it's current that actually travels, right? So it's the current that actually travels. So what happens when current reaches CPU? When a current reaches to CPU, it determines binary code from a current. If current is coming, CPU interprets that as 1, while if current didn't come for a certain duration, CPU interprets that as 0. Let's see how current represents current that has reached to it. So current is not coming, therefore 0 current is coming 1, current is not coming 0, current is coming 1. So CPU has determined binary code to be 1010 0, 1, 0 from the current it received. But what does 1010 0, 1, 0 represent? In our case, it's letter A. So this way, finally CPU knows user has in fact typed letter A. By the same way, CPU knows what kind of picture is in your pen drive, what kind of song is in your CD. Coding scheme, that is the way of, that's the way of giving binary code to data. Um, has not been discussed here. I want to make that clear. And um, also while giving binary code to a picture and songs, things have been greatly simplified in above examples. In fact, things like pictures, songs, videos have lots of ones and zeros in the binary code. Let's take an example. Let's try to find out how many ones and zeros does some picture have? Let's say the picture, the size of a picture is 2 MB. To find the size of the picture, uh, select the picture, then right click. In the options you get, uh, click on properties. So this way. Uh, you can find size of any picture. What does the size mean here? Certainly the size here does not directly refer to physical size like length, width in millimeter or inches. Uh, let's do some math here. 
So the size of the picture is 2 MB. If you multiply that by 1024, megabyte becomes kilobyte. If you again multiply by 1024, kilobyte becomes byte. Uh, if you multiply by 8, byte becomes bit. So you have mm, more than 16 million bit. Now remember, one bit means either one one or one zero. So when you say the size of the picture is 2 MB, it means there are more than 16 million ones and zeros in a binary code of that pictures. So how's today's video? Please uh, leave your comments and suggestions below. I would be posting videos like this which explain fundamental concepts related to computer in a simple, non-technical, easy to understand manner. So please do consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, so this was for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and uh, see you in next one.